All right, welcome to this week's tip of the week uh, workflow edition. I'm excited to show you guys a really uh, neat tool here in Bluebeam that you might not have known about um, or some of you have known but maybe not in this capacity before. So today we're going to be talking about stamps and uh, stamps are a really neat function within Bluebeam um, that can be used in a lot of different ways um, and so I've sent out a couple tips in the past about um, how stamps can be used and created uh, but today I'm actually going to start to piece some things together to show you how you can use stamps uh, a little bit more efficiently when you um, combine different aspects to them uh, to save you some time from printing and you know using a rubber stamp to um, having to go back in and scan and, and resend. So um, the first thing I'm going to show you here um, is going to be a stamp for as builds and then the next one I'm going to show you is more for invoices which I think is really applicable to a lot of uh, different people here at Beck who either review invoices or code them um, and show you a stamp that's that's really really neat um, that you guys can have access to um, and ultimately uh, say hopefully save you guys some times um, with using Bluebeam. So I have five minutes on the clock. My hope is that we'll uh, wrap this up here uh, very quickly and we'll let you guys get back to what you're doing. So let's go ahead and start the timer. So up here under markup, um, the tab, there's the um, button here called stamp. And so the first one you'll see here, if you click on these, you'll see ones in here that were already pre-populated uh, that you'll already have. Um, and so to place a stamp, you would just click on it and go and drag it on the page. So this one, for example, was an as-built stamp, but you'll notice that it has a dynamic uh, date based on today's date. And so what I'm going to do is show you how that gets populated in these stamps, because this is what we call a dynamic text box. So I'm going to go and uh, go ahead and delete that. And if you go up to stamp, when you hover over a stamp, you're going to see this little edit icon. When you click on that, it's going to open up that stamp file. So you'll see here, this is a really small stamp, but we're going to go ahead and zoom in here. And you'll notice that this is a dynamic text box. So this is a text box that is uh, just a dynamic field waiting for the month, date, and year based on when you stamp the stamp. So um, another aspect that you can do, I'm just going to copy paste that and change this to something different. When I go and edit the text, you're going to notice that this dynamic drop-down box appears. So if I wanted to, for example, say what user uh, is going to stamp this, I'm going to do that, and then maybe put a space and add another dynamic field of, um, let's see, maybe just the hour, I guess. We'll, we'll see if that has any uh, application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. So this is a file, just like a PDF. So I'm going to save that, and then we're going to go restamp it, and I'm going to show you what that looks like uh, when we stamp this back down on this document. So I'm going to go up to stamp again. This was the smaller for specs. I'm going to click on it, and then apply it to the page. So you'll see here that it now added my username and 13, because it's about 1 o'clock, um, as the hour for um, that stamp. So that's a little bit of an idea of how you can use uh, dynamic fields in stamps to not have to go back in here and actually put the date and time and different things. You saw that you could do month, year, time, file, um, username, all sorts of different things. So go and check that out under stamps. The next thing that I want to show you is probably my favorite stamp that I've created, which is the invoice stamp. So typically an invoice workflow looks like um, getting an invoice from someone, printing it out, rubber stamping the typical invoice stamp, uh, filling it out, and then scanning it uh, back in with your handwritten text. But what I've done is streamline that process so you can actually fill out the invoice stamp electronically. So I'm going to go up to stamp here again, click on that, and go down to invoice approval fillable form stamp. Um, this stamp is also in the tip of the week email for you to download and install with this import stamp function down here. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to show you what it looks like when I place this stamp down. What happens is this pop-up window appears allowing us to fill in the form fields that would be on the invoice stamp. So let's say that the invoice number is um, or document number is DC 101 Vendor number, uh, this one I don't have specifically, but let's just say um, billings. Invoice number, you can see up here in the top right. Uh, we're going to say 60115. The invoice date, you'll notice, is actually pre-populated. So this is something that is populated based off today's date. But if you do want to change this, you have the ability to go and edit that information. Invoice amount, this one is 2764.55. 
zip code is whatever zip code we have. Checked by is again based off my username, so this was something that was automatically populated. Uh, job number, I'm going to say 165445.10, phase code, and you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just filling in information that pertains to um, whatever job this would happen to be. So I'm just going to go 1001. Additional codes, uh, this field, I'm going to put this field can be left empty. And this is something that you can just fill out, and I'm going to show you the example of what that looks at. And additional notes, uh, this is where you can split up the dollar amount. So maybe a thousand is going to um, phase code 162442, and then um, put a comma and say uh, 1500, or let's we'll say 1200 is going to whatever different code. So when I hit OK, what's going to happen is it's going to fill out this, um, this stamp based on this text information. So we're going to go and hit OK. And you can see here that it filled out all that information based on what that invoice stamp is. And the cool part is, is that it left out information that would typically need to be filled in later. So approved by and the due date is something that is left blank. And what you can do is you can come in here and add an additional field or text on top of this to say the due date is whatever date that it would need to be. So I hope you guys uh, see value in using the stamp. Uh, it's something that I, I've found a lot of value in using uh, when I've had to fill out invoices. And I think it's something that you guys can use to not have to print something, come back in, um, or print something, hand write this information down, and then uh, scan it back in to send it. And so um, I've, I had a lot of requests for this type of stamp in the past and wanted to share it with you guys, and I hope you guys found uh, this as some useful information. To import this stamp, um, again, where we went to is import right here. And so that file that was in the tip of the week, you can go ahead and download that and import that stamp into that file um, into this folder to allow you to use this stamp right away. So hope you guys found some use in this. My five minutes is up, and we will see you next week.